Welcome to Isn't It Obvious, where things are obvious. <laughs> That's going to be the intro. Thanks, Mom, for being with us today. Yeah, so I have a, I have a question. It's a little relevant to me because recently I broke my cell phone like I do. Isn't it obvious that the price of cell phones are just too damn high? Whoa. I disagree. They're, they're not high enough. Ugh. What no. are you talking about? Yeah, no, Too high. No, you no, should no. not have to spend $1,000 No, No, you, on... you should. No. You should spend $2,000. No. But the companies need to have an extended livelihood, and there should be enough expectations of the quality of the product, where having something new is a status symbol it's supposed to be, as opposed to the expectation of always having something new. So, like you're saying, so you're saying like, okay, I'm going to spend two thousand. I'm going to spend two grand on an iPhone 11. But it's going to last me for two years. It's going to last me for five years. It better last you for at least and five if years. in three years I have an okay. iPhone 11, but somebody has an iPhone 14, I don't have that status symbol of having an iPhone 11. Okay, but fair. But here's my problem with that: phones are being fragile and they're small. They're really useful, but I'm a cl- I'm, I'm clumsy. I drop shit all the all the damn time. I dropped mine earlier, and and I've dropped mine a whole bunch. I've it hasn't broke. Dropped mine all the time. And, you know, maybe I'll get, like, a cracked, like, screen or whatever. But recently, dropped it, and it landed on the hard floor, and it shattered the entire screen, and it's just not usable. Mm-hmm. That's... I kind of made a decision to not spend $1,000 on my last phone, because I just... I can't justify $1,000 for something I really just need to send texts, you know? But it's not just that. It, you're, and you're right, it isn't just that. There's, It's a necessary tool. But mm-hmm. $1,000, this doesn't need to be $1,000. A computer can be $1,000. But that's what that is. It's a small computer and it can't do everything a computer can. But it can do most things a computer can and at your fingertips and but whenever you want. not as conveniently and not as easily. But whenever you want and doesn't require a power outlet and doesn't require a mouse and doesn't require a keyboard. Well, well, it takes some finesse. It, but it, you want the keyboard for your computer. Like, I'm not going to ever write a, a paper on my phone. You could. Some, I have like three screenplays. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, there's a <laughs> terrible author out there who's written you know, her entire... Don't you dare besmirch that's, Sure, that's, right. that's who I was talking about. <laughs> uh, something, something on a Blackberry. Anyway. Wait, so are you saying that... I'm sorry, that's not fair. Some people like that. Let's say the phone was one of those silly foldable ones that had... The screen the, folding? Can we, can we not, please? Because well, that's a horrible just, design. We're, we're it's going, a bad design. It's so we're stupid. We're going in. Right? Okay. Oh my god. Right. Something that you would have the ability to be portable, but also capable of being good enough to browse the web, write a screenplay. It comes with a mouse somehow. I don't know. Just like <laughs> the ability to easily navigate and... Well, so that's, 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 that, no, no, no. But that's right, the touchscreen. The touch that screen is, makes the mouse superfluous. Sure. Because you, you need to click on something, you click on something. And Sure, but sometimes that keyboard is really nice. Well, that's let's just saying. say somehow this thing, this new portable device foldable laptop phone thing is capable of just foldable tablet foldable tablet that has somehow like it's a the nice size of a smartphone flip it six times it's a tablet did you know that you can't physically flip something seven times but mythbusters was able to do it for this special foldable laptop oh, for God's sake. and they were able to do it seven and on their eighth fold they shattered it completely <laughs> R.I.P. to the crew <laughs> with the bulldozers. <laughs> it exploded, and half of San Francisco is inhabitable for the next 20 to 60 Perfect. years. We didn't know how much of lead was in that solder, but it turns out... It was amazing. Yeah. Fucking rare growth elements. Explosive. <laughs> New cancers we haven't discovered. <laughs> <laughs> it was something. The San Francisco from Good Terminator sequel is now true. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Terminator? Terminator Salvation was not that bad. Terminator 2, right? That's the only no, sequel no, no, no. we talk about. No, 2 was fine. 3 was god-awful. Oh, God. And <laughs> Salvation wasn't that bad. Salvation was... Okay. Christian Bale. I mean, yeah, a lot of it was bad. But a lot of it wasn't all that bad. I feel bad that it I was... I enjoyed the Terminator movies. Some of them. Kind of quaint? The, the <laughs> fact that, like, the paradox that you can't stop the future is always ever-present is kind of nice. And that can give a lot of directors a new outlet to be like, Oh, yeah, I Sarah have... Connor thought she stopped 
Judgment Day, but it still happened. How can this movie be a franchise? I like, hate time It doesn't travel. really make... Doesn't be, because that's the whole point. It's, it's a closed loop. They solve the issue... But the problem ends up happening anyway in a different way. Because time Because you is... can't fix the problem with time travel. H.G. Wells figured that out in like 1880. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you can't go back happen. in time to fix a problem. It doesn't work time travel. Because the problem will find its way to happen again. No, my, my question Because then you don't have the impetus to go back in time. The question though is like, how can you make a movie out of this? How can you make any movie out of this is a wonder. No, no, no. how can you make any good movie out of this? <laughs> well, you cannot. Well, you cannot. Because you can Holly- make a movie out of it. No, no, because Hollywood has had the same problem Looper? Hollywood has. Oh, uh, no, this is terrible stuff. Looper was slightly better. It wasn't they cl- no, because they closed, he they closed did close the loop. The loop. He, yeah. So that was the only good part about it, was that was so functional time travel corrected because the only way it could be corrected. Yeah, but except the whole, like, I have an issue with corrections in real yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing, whole like, young kid scratching into his yeah, arm because all the old guy's arm. I'm like, that's... No, because as soon as the old guy goes back, that's a new timeline. Yeah, it doesn't... Well, it's a new world. First of all... It goes from Earth 1 to Earth 2. Cell phones. Cell phones are too... They are Damn not. Expensive. They need to be more expensive. No, no, they they absolutely less. need to be more expensive. When you have something, no, when you have something that is kind no, of here's mostly the thing. necessary. A fifty dollar to- flip phone can do everything you need. You could have a Nokia Razor from two thousand and five. It would functionally do everything you needed to do. Text and call, right, and check messages. Yeah, and minor email. The the thing yeah. you're paying for with your new phone is apps, increased processor speed, yep. the increased RAM, and the ability to search for more complex things. And have like a decent camera have a decent uh, I feel that's tangential I would like if my phone did have a camera I would I don't understand or how like many, the, how the can front you... facing camera oh the worst thing to go to cell phones I need cameras a front facing no just you know I don't need to be looking at the screen and looking at my face at the I same time I will say it like, is useful I when you don't selfies. have a mirror and you're the like angle. I need to get whatever this is out of my teeth or like oh we haven't Someone says, "Hey, Sarah, See, I, you've got you've got broccoli teeth," and you're like, "Ah, oh, oh, crap." I'm okay, well, I don't have a mirror. Broccoli so. in your teeth? I don't know. You don't like. How do you not feel that? <laughs> Try to pick up broccoli like that sounds like your teeth. Okay, this is okay. This doesn't happen to me very often, clearly, but. <laughs> Or ever. Or ever. Wait, way, way to bring a Hollywood problem into our serious conversational itself. It was actually not a Hollywood problem. It was a Nickelodeon problem. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. It's known Hollywood. for not being filmed in Hollywood. Anyway, whatever. Let me let Rock me ask you this question mind. about <laughs> the the concept that people <laughs> will be paying a thousand dollars for a new phone is the idea that you have a computer that's on you uh, that's easily a accessible very portable with its with its own bells and whistles with its own iPhone is over from Samsung right. going from In the, Nokia all of the whatever LG brands. I have a Motorola Motorola is the best by the way HTC disagree Just get out of my house <laughs> uh, I am I'm so looking forward to wanting to get my Google Pixel mm. so bad because I just I, I want to have a cell phone where I look at it yeah and but it's how much like, are you gonna pay for that what, have you like 1200 yeah, yeah. but I'm fine a, with that yeah. because you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna open it up day one it's gonna have Google Play Gmail Chrome and nothing else yeah that's all you agree and I'm gonna look at it and be like I don't have to delete 16 different hey. Amazon apps and it doesn't have Facebook built into it <gasps> Oh my god! I bought my. This is Skippy! I bought my unlocked Motorola and had basically Google Play Chrome and. Yeah, but what is your guarantee on that unlocked phone? If you happen to get a bug on there that like, deletes any kind of Yeah, but you know how much I paid for this? 200 bucks. Sure. Which is not a thousand dollars. Okay, that's fine. Instead <laughs> of buying a twenty thousand dollar car, I'm gonna buy a four thousand dollar car. It's gonna have some issues. I haven't had any issues yet at all. Like it's basically the phone I bought. It's the same phone I bought before I broke it, right? Sure. I just bought a replacement. Basically. At what point did you buy that phone initially? When did uh, you buy that phone new? Three years ago? No, two years ago. Okay. Maybe. So uh, much like not. much like car ownership, cell phone ownership depreciates Immediately. right after purchase. Yeah. So the same phone I got is yeah. a lot less. Because I paid the exactly. first time, I paid more, mm-hmm. but I also bought a few extra things with it. Sure, this and they just but that, translate like over. Th- that's the stratum you have to look at cell phone ownership, and a lot of people view their cell phone ownership as a matter of pride and part of their status. I worked with a dude at one point who every two months when a new phone came out, he would trade in his Ugh, still new phone disgusting. and get a newer phone. <laughs> I mean, fair. And then, like, just show it off. He's like, dude, I got this thing with all these gadgets. I got this thing with all these gadgets. Two months later, I got this new thing with all these gadgets. It's a status symbol. And make the high-end shit more expensive. Because, why not? 
if you have the high, if you have a Bugatti of cell phones at three thousand, and it's not the everything's gold plated and a you know thirty thousand dollar cell phone because that's dumb. In no, the, no, in, no. In this no. analogy, owning a Bugatti is dumb, but like owning a Mercedes because Mercedes is still a practical vehicle you can use every day, but it's eighty thousand dollars base model. So if you had five thousand dollar iPhone as the top end, as the status symbol. Then you can have someone come out with a very stripped down smartphone that lacks. Like mine. <laughs> yeah. And then it's just, it's $200. It's as functional, but doesn't have all the bells and whistles and doesn't have the iPhone name to it. Yeah. But then it makes it more practical because then there will be a market for that low end where you have the Mercedes Benz is never going to make a $10,000 car for the average man. They never will because that hurts their brand. Yeah. I remember that there was this some kind of concept of a price for every market, mm-hmm. right? So like you have the low end phones that are $75 or something that comes with a lot of spyware. Mm. And you come with, and then you have like a thousand dollar phones that come with proprietary spyware. Mm. Like you can't delete and it's just there forever. But the idea that there is a, a price for every market that you're not willing to pay for the latest chipset or all the bells and whistles, the more RAM or hard drive space or mm-hmm. uh, megapixels, you're willing to just get something that's more bare bones. I feel like that's okay for the majority of all people who use phones. I mm. don't think that there's anyone who does professional well, like, work on phones anyway. We, we don't have an established Honda phone in the market today. We right. really don't. No, no. I mean, I would say the closest one to that would be like uh, the HTC, but no one wants to be called the... But no, HTC was like the Subaru. Mm-hmm. Those who owned mm-hmm. it knew how good it was. Mm-hmm. Those who didn't look down on it. Right. I think that my problem with the Honda of cell phones is that no one wants to be called the Honda of cell phones. Right? This is kind of like... Oh, the yeah. you, that'd be a fabulous market. It's, a, it's the dead market zone. Hey, hey. You can get a new phone. For five hundred dollars every year, and everything would be great on it, mm. or could we until just... it dies, and then you just pay five hundred dollars, and you get the same thing. Yeah, but could we just not spend five hundred dollars every year? Could we do I don't know two hundred dollars every two years? Well, there's there's an issue where phones are not just increasing the value every generation, which is what every year. And it's like, well, if I have an iPhone 10 and now I'm looking at the iPhone 11, for example, or the next one up, it's like, hmm, what am I really getting out of this other than the status? Well, you get a whole third camera. Or you get less features because I hate to say it, but iPhone, I think was, maybe it was like six to seven or six to eight or something like that. I've never had an iPhone. Well, I stopped after six, (laughs) but... They like actually removed features, or they now they have like automatic. We're gonna like their new OS forces you to have Bluetooth turned on unless you disable it specifically. And this, it's what? so yes, yeah, so your Bluetooth <laughs> turns on again automatically. And I'm like, what the f? Really? We know you're gonna connect it. You don't know you're gonna connect it, but so, we know. So you, you, so they have like those little drop down thing. You can uh, swipe down on the upper right corner, and it'll give you like. Uh, station basic settings that you can change your own yeah so you can turn off wi-fi you can go to airplane mode you can turn off your bluetooth except now it doesn't just stay off in 24 hours everything back on again unless you go into settings so it kind of makes that whole feature totally stupid and useless right they give you this thing you have to learn how to use it once you know it you're like okay well that's really convenient great and then they take it away because they're assholes and that's what an apple does (laughs) they're like and we're just gonna get rid of this cool feature that we gave you and you're gonna learn something new or we're just gonna have bluetooth on all the time because we want to listen to you and we want you to waste your battery life and whatever so they had to have an impetus in order to do that so what is the kind of person that goes from bluetooth to bluetooth all the time I need Bluetooth in my car, and then when I get out of my car, I need Bluetooth in my headphones. And when I'm out of that, I need Bluetooth into my stereo. I have to go in and automatically connect to Bluetooth? I don't want to well, do see, that no more. Is that you don't have to. But when you turn it off, you should expect it to stay off until you turn it on again. Not just automatically. Well, but the fact that it's automatically on all the time anyway when you get your phone. Even when you turn it off for 24 hours and it's like, eh, right. just I kidding. Mean, that makes it worse. But the fact that they had that as a feature and not a bug it was a- means that they had enough people complaining like, it's too hard for me to connect my Bluetooth. Have you tried turning your Bluetooth on? What's Bluetooth? <laughs> <laughs> I can't I, connect I bought some earbuds, but I don't make noise out of them. No, I, I, <laughs> maybe that could be true. Like there was a reason they made that change. I think, and then you have maybe. to think of like, or they just took it away to so they can make it. They thought easier for you, but... Potentially, but it was like, there was a, many points where I was with a friend, and every time we would get into her car, 
Bluetooth would be on and music would just start playing. And many times she would have to turn it off right after her car started. Oh, this is or very you could bad. Just turn it off and leave it off so it doesn't do that when you don't want it to. You have to consciously turn but, like, something on. If she didn't have passengers, that would have been fine for her. But she had a passenger, so like there there was no gatekeeper for her to be like play kind I of thing. It would just have, play. I would rather consciously choose to play it. Absolutely. Always. Yes, that's why Apple is awful. That's why that's why I'm saying uh, uh, hashtag not a sponsor. <laughs> thanks, also, Apple. Thanks, Apple. <laughs> I feel like the phone is really replacing my laptop usage. So if I want to be able to write the next email or status update, I'm going to do that on my personal computer. But I very rarely bust that out these days now. Oh. Either that I just don't write these type of lengthy emails to begin with because it's all done by a texting basis. Or that I just got lazy or that our new lives just don't really support it. But either way, like I very rarely open my laptop to do anything other than just, but it's, just collecting dust. Yeah, well. So I agree. And I spent an obscene amount on my laptop. Same. Same. And Back. Of the day. I've, I've used it enough, and that's the only confidence I can give to that sentiment, <laughs> where I'll sit at home, and it's next to me, and it's a battery for my Bluetooth headset. Right. Which is awful. <laughs> no, I, I used to lug this, this laptop around just because I wanted to be able to have something to do while mm -hmm. I'm out and about, and it just ended up being so useless yeah. because most of the stuff that I'm going to do is going to be Netflix on the phone or you know just mm -hmm. casual browsing online. You need Wi-Fi like texting, for that. and you need yeah. This no, is no, just no, right, and I don't want to like set up my cell phone to give 3G network access to my laptop and set that up. Like no, I'm just going to go ahead and go and use my phone, and therefore my brain automatically says like look. I'm going to spend a thousand dollars personal computer that's going to sadly replace tablets and laptops and every even my personal desk gaming rig that I don't have anymore because I just want to be able to. Its purpose. It served its purpose, but I guess now it's like, well, look, I just need something to check the weather and email. Which is and Reddit why a phone is really yeah. dang useful because it's small and portable. Right. You can Which keep it in your pocket. Or then your purse or goes to my argument that you then can have the stratification if. You make the top end for those people that can support that market, but it increases the quality of the low end. But you still have the low yes. end being approachable because they need to make their buck. Right. So having a $300 cell phone is the same thing as having a $800 laptop. Yeah. Which... Because you pay for a $1,500 laptop, you know what you're getting. There's you? still greater... Mm -hmm. And they're still lesser, but it's the standard bar of what expectation meeting cost can be. I guess I expect a laptop, a thousand bucks, to be a reasonably good laptop, right? That's going to last me at least five years. You know? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So that's the thing. If the stratification make it more expensive, thousand well, dollars forced for, to increase the longevity. thousand dollars for a very powerful machine should last me five, yeah, in quotes. Yeah. A very powerful machine that should be more powerful than a phone. It's bigger, right? You'd think mm -hmm. it has more. Should be a good laptop. You can buy a good laptop for $500. Yeah. But it's not doing the same thing as that $1,500 one. Kind of does. The $500 laptop, I can't I have a video on one side and me browsing the internet in one corner and me typing something else in another corner and have that all work functionally because the RAM doesn't support it. Right. The laptop I bought for $1,000 has that jacked up RAM. It can do that. My thought is that if I'm not going to spend the money on laptops and gaming rigs and whatnot, I'm going to damn well spend that money on the thing that I use and it's going to be nice. Well, That's so my thought. Our expectations are you have a home computer, you have a portable computer, and you have a functional cell phone. I feel that was the idea in 2004. Yeah. Right. When we were approaching adulthood and was like, these are the things I expect to happen as an adult. What I had as a kid in one of those well, let me three tell you, facets. I pared that down. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But it's that. But then technology fucking leapfrogged. Yeah. So now it's like, well, I, I don't really need the laptop because that's kind of the cell phone. So now yeah. that raises in priority. But the cell phone isn't as powerful as the home computer. So those are up top and a laptop is kind of somewhere in the middle. Like it's nice to have if you need to travel right. and have a computer. If, if it's part if you of, have to type, yeah, like, if, if it's a lot of typing and a lot of Skype or something. Yeah. Or, or you Anything that requires conference. more power and stability than the phone that gives it relevance. But it's definitely not in third place where it was home PC, laptop, and then phone. Now it's like. Home PC, phone, then laptop. I feel like but it's then, more like phone, home PC, than laptop. Right, that's care. what it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was a time in the late aughts where I still need a 
pretty good PC in order to do the things I need to do because I can't make a PowerPoint on my phone. Yeah. Right. Just, Eight years or like five can, years later, it's like, I can kind of do a PowerPoint on my phone. But it's not as easy and it's not as convenient. Right. But that's why the laptop rose up again because now I need something that's portable that has this power because now laptops have more power than the home PC. So it's this weird power flux, but the phone has increased more and more and more. Well, as opposed to now, you can have a phone... And a home PC or a laptop, and you're fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With any of those two combinations. But you do not need all three. True. Really, it's the stratification of a smartwatch, a phone, the a fuck tablet, a watch do? and a Please PC. tell me. Give me an argument for Why? owning a smartwatch. The best argument I have for owning a smartwatch is because I don't have to look at my goddamn smartphone as much. The problem I have <laughs> with my goddamn smartphone... Is that the best argument? I this is the one, best argument. I'll, I'll and the reason issues. why is because when I look at my phone, I'm going to do like five other things right in front of my family. Right? <laughs> right? Like, oh, shoot. Like, I got a text from my brother. And then it's like, well, shoot. What is this charger on my phone? And, huh. Why do I have this email from so-and-so? Like, oh, look, I have a text from work. I better answer that. And no, th this just... Well, I'm here. I should look at Twitter. And, oh, my God, he said what? And I'm going to need to reply No, to and then I'm like, well, then my muscle memory goes to, like, these websites. Like, oh, I'm interested in what, what Reddit Phil? is. What or... websites, Phil? It's just Reddit. <laughs> and, <laughs> Let's I mean, be honest. That's all you ever need. <laughs> like, I don't even have the app. You just have to have Chrome. And then you yeah. just have to... Yeah. Navigate their really terrible... Okay, anyway. The smart watch is just be like, what was that? Oh, it was a text because I got a charge on a gas Basically station. A, okay, that's it. It, it is, doesn't allow you to be able to kind of like wander off because you're like, oh, well, but, maybe I should check it, on this and that. But it still can. So... Yeah, but the barrier it, of entry it, it, is no, worse. No, but it's like so, you it, have it to, gives you the impetus where when you get a buzz in your pocket and you look at it, you can then... Put it back in your pocket because you have the presence of mind of your situation. Where when you look at it on your watch, you're then assessing like, yeah. can I use my phone now? Because I've looked at my watch, my watch is connected to my phone. I now have visually, I uh, really incentivized, like so, visually cued so that there's I, something on my phone. I really appreciate. Sorry, I really appreciate that you think I have the presence of mind when I look at my phone and put it back. So I'm like, I'm glad you give me the credit, but I can confirm. And so can the editor. Many times where this does not happen. It's Thank just once I'm on the phone, then it's simply I'm on the phone now. It's mm. like it might as well be a goddamn laptop right in front of my face to be like, oh, now I'm going to start doing work. And that is terrible. Whereas the barrier of entry that is in my pocket and I look at my watch and I'm like, oh, I don't really I'm, want to just... I'm going to state this now for the listeners. Phil does not have a smartwatch. I don't have a smartwatch. I'm just making this <laughs> argument for thin <laughs> fucking air. So anyway. Because there have been many times where I've been with friends who have a smartwatch where they're He's he's my he's he's doing some. I'm, I'm pantomiming, flipping, flipping through text and smartwatch was and responding ruling. via yeah that like that, texting via smartwatch, which is so much more rude. That I agree. It's, yeah, it like, looks ruder. Yeah, and having an arm up and swiping letters and then correcting is so much more rude well, than you just taking out your phone and being like nothing. How about you? I feel like it's more excusable when you have a phone because you have no idea what the other side of that could be. Like if you just took your but phone you don't off have a during watch either. Like, the watch is funny because if you look at your regular watch, and I'm talking, and I'm like, hey, look, you know, I think that there's a situation, and you're like, huh, that, that looks like... That sounds really boring. Like, your yeah, your I, conversation is so boring, I'm looking at my watch. Yeah, yeah, what is this? We're, we're going to talk about how the Vikings are doing in the playoffs, and oh, look at that. It is 10-15, pantomiming having a pocket watch. I think maybe watch. it's a millennial right. thing, but like, we can kind of, we can forgive someone looking at their phone briefly, right, but right. Like, looking at their watch looks like, I don't have time to listen to you right now. I have that where someone the first time someone busted out the Apple watch and it was an old coworker to, to show it off and I was and like the same thing I was like look you know um, I was like dude what the heck man like pantomiming someone looking at you know it's like why are you rudely oh and she's like oh I'm sorry it's a text from so and so about this thing and I'm like did I tell you oh, about my Apple watch so, so let me tell you I don't have to look at my phone anymore I just look at my watch it's right here it's essentially the same thing as looking at your phone but I think that just the action of looking at your wrist gets a watch just looks yeah. rude it looks so much <laughs> it's so yeah rude. It's, I don't so know. that's my argument for pro smartwatch but I don't own a freaking smartwatch so my argument ridiculous. for 
smartwatch being maybe useful. I know one of my neighbor's kids has one. Like mm. she doesn't want to trust her daughter with a full cell phone, but to keep in touch with her because she's being a parent and maybe. limited cell phone. Yeah. So yeah. basically, a smartwatch in her case, and also because it like has a tracker, so she can kind of like keep an eye on where she is. There are which practical is creepy as for it. Heck, but you know, fair whatever. I, I don't understand what it's like to be a, a, a mom of anyway. It's like having cats, but they talk. And, you know, go out into the world and do stuff. It's way Mind more... Door. You, you the the door cats. open, they nope. will be afraid to go outside. Cats don't have the tendency to try to kill themselves every hour of the day. True. Unlike humans. Unlike humans. And, small like, humans. Small humans. Oh, small they, humans. No, no, no. They don't try to it's kill like, themselves. They just put themselves <clears throat> in situations where their death is increased, probability-wise. I mean, curiosity Until they're, like, 15, the cat, then they actually like, start It really should be children. <laughs> it really should be children. Because children are way too curious for their own good. No, what happens if I put this in that? <laughs> you die. You die. Stop. All right, so Chlorine and Bleach are no longer our friends together. <laughs> and next week on Isn't It Obvious, uh, Chlorine and Bleach, the ultimate nightcap. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, Thank you, Mom, for getting me this, this far. I well, appreciate it. I know it's a hard job. I think that the hierarchy yeah. is phone, watch, tablet, laptop, and tower, or, you know, rig. No, no, no. Phone, All right. tower, no, no, I'm, laptop. I'm, 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 I don't, I mean, like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm nipping this in the bud. Oh. This is definitely, what was the best album of 2005? It doesn't really matter. Everyone's going to say something different. 2005? Arbitrary year, insert, doesn't matter. Okay. It's an opinion on how people verify anything. Sure. The point is, we care too much about our phones and not enough about human beings. Eh. On the next episode <laughs> of Isn't It Obvious. Disagree. Something <laughs> else completely random that will not stay on topic. Fair enough. Thanks, Thanks Mom. Mom. Thanks.